Lucy Hunt and this is Hailing Island Donkey Sanctuary um, here on Hailing down at Millride Lane. started like 13 years ago we bought two little donkeys Rusty and Ollie who were doing beach rides on Hailing Seafront. So this is how it all started with this little chap 13 years ago. This is Ollie and he's about 22 now so he's, he goes out and does nursing home visits and therapy visits and stuff like that so yeah we've got him to blame. <laughs> Over the years we've come across um, donkeys that have simply been unwanted ex-beach donkeys that are retired. Boise is an um, ex-beach donkey from Skegness. So he's had a bit of a hard life working on the sandy beaches in Skegness, bless him. We've got to be very careful that, of preserving the standard of life and quality for the ones we have already. So we bring a new one in, don't know where it's come from or its real background. People say, yeah, it's all up together, but it's never had an equine vaccine, um, which donkeys can be prone to catching equine flu. Its teeth probably haven't been done, which gives them sharp hooks on their teeth, which can cause mouth ulcers and problems digesting their food. I believe that donkeys are absolutely fine doing a bit of work, you know, um, the exercise and the interaction and stuff. But we like to think, um, obviously, that our donkeys have a good balance between work, rest and play. In the wild, they're just left to get on with it, but they're in the right environment. Here, they're not. They're in a, in a strange environment and we need to make sure that they've got all their needs covered. Donkeys live such a long time, they can live up to their late 40s, early 50s, that people just simply don't want them. And once their working day is over, um, giving children rides, then they're not really any good for that anymore. We need to make sure that they're sociable enough and interact in a peaceful, kind way with each other. So uh, just to prevent any injuries and so on. This is Hugo, he's coming up for four years old now. Um, he was a rescue donkey, practically half starved, came in with his little brother Alfie. It's a long term commitment and it's proven to be, as we found, an expensive commitment. We now have open days at the sanctuary, so we're getting a lot of interest from the community, which is really good, which is what we need to keep, it, to keep us all going. Um, we have adopting donkeys, sponsoring donkeys, so you can adopt a donkey for £24 a year and then come and see him on a regular basis and things and do some grooming and stuff like that. They can't live on their own, they must have other, other donkeys as company, um, otherwise they're very unhappy. On our open days we sell a little bit of merchandise, and we do care and cuddle workshops and all sorts really, um, Christmas events and yeah, so it all just helps to fund the sanctuary and keep it running because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Just got to keep the pennies coming in to look after them all. And with the help of the public, we can do, we're able to do that. Their hair is just like our hair. Less greasy in some instances. <laughs> so they don't like being out in the rain and it will cause them skin problems if they are. And rescuing a donkey and then bringing it back to, to, to good health and then it learns to trust you again. That is just so rewarding. They can walk up to 30 miles a day in the wild looking for scraps of food. So they're very good walkers. And I think that's probably why the Romans brought them to this country as pack animals back in the day, so that they could use the horses for cavalry but still get their stuff carted about on good walking donkeys. <laughs> Because it's just my husband and I that, that run the donkey sanctuary, we have to rely heavily on volunteers, uh, which are just brilliant. They've all got their day jobs and things. So to make the open days happen, we just do have random open days. But what we're hoping to do is have them quite often, frequently, on the, every weekend in the summer. Donkeys originate from like really hot countries, Asia and Africa. Um, so they're really designed for the heat and the hot and the dry terrain, so they must have access to shelter. This is your more traditional donkey, which you would find in the wild. This is your steel grey donkey uh, with the cross all the way down his back. Where they come from, it's just desert plains with rough scrubland. Um, they've got to walk 30 miles a day just to fill their tummies up. Uh, so this country is a little bit too rich, like being in a sweet shop. And they say that a donkey can hear the big ears, they can hear another donkey bray like 60 miles away. And they also act as like a cooling system, there is. 
So in the, in the hot countries, it's like they're heat controllers. Um, we kind of start around about 5, 5.30 in the morning um, with our first sip of coffee, doing administration work, answering inquiries, ask, um, fulfilling adoption orders, etc. Uh, then we're up here from 6.30 in the morning to do the basic chores, to clear all the poo out the field, which is a really important process to keeping worm count down, um, cleaning their beds out, feeding the donkeys as required, treating any sick ones. They form a bond with another one. It's like Rusty and Ollie. Um, they're a really close bonded pair and they will bond for life. This little local donkey sanctuary here on Hailing um, gives people the opportunity to come and see the donkeys rather than, you know, being too far away. Um, and it's a nice thing for Hailing, I think. And the public and the community is all rallying together to help us just to get this established and keep it going for years to come. Pretty unique place, isn't it? It's kind of, it's not um, set back in time as much as the Isle of Wight perhaps, but it's got a slower speed. It's got a lovely community spirit and we've found that so much so since we've been developing the sanctuary. People desperately want to get involved. They do get involved and the amount of support has been incredible over the last year or so. Um, so it's a special place. I think we've got the best of both worlds, haven't we? I mean, we're right next to the sea. Who could want for more? Um, we've got lots of people. It gives people another thing to come and see on the island. It has its own climate. <laughs> it's like a microclimate. It can be raining over there and over there, but not here. Costa del Hailing, as they call it. And the people are special. They do sort of club together, a close-knit place, yeah. It's a very special place. We're trying to make this a place that gives them a lifelong home. And some of them will probably outlive us. So we need to make the organisational structure um, and the infrastructure and the public support enough that it will continue whether we roll off the end or not. It's about being able to look after them properly rather than get lots and lots that you're kind of stretched to look after um, because that's the thing with keeping the donkeys it's always about the vets bills and everything else with them so we want to do it properly. We have a website um, with a donation page and an adoption page if someone wanted to adopt a donkey it's a nice a nice way fluffy way of supporting the animals financially as well as you know emotionally um, and we also have our open days, attending those, having a cup of tea, a piece of cake, watching the donkeys, uh, buying a bit of merchandise, are all ways of helping support them. And you're getting something back as well. So um, donkey magic is invaluable to us. And I see it affect people in such a positive way from every aspect of life, whether, whether they're disadvantaged or you know, a high-flying executive. Everybody I meet who meets a donkey comes away feeling better and happier. So that donkey magic is well worth the effort putting into them.